We have men on the sides who are going to be making their way down the aisles. If you don't have a Bible, we'd love to put one in your hand. Just raise your hand and they'll get one to you. And you can open up your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. This is the time in our service. If you're new or visiting each week, we remember Christ and we take the Lord's table together. And we remember what Christ has accomplished on our behalf. We remember his blood that we just sang of that was shed for us. And we remember his body that was broken on our behalf. And in a few moments, there's going to be men coming down the aisles, passing out trays. And on those trays is uh, crackers and juice. And these are symbols for us to remember what Christ has done. And we take these things, we're remembering Christ's death, but we're also proclaiming something as we do this. We are anticipating and proclaiming his death until he returns. You see, this is a time of celebration in one regard for us because Christ has conquered death once and for all. And he will return to take us home permanently with him. And we long for that day and we recognize that the only reason we can anticipate that day is because of who Christ is and what he has accomplished in the gospel. And this gospel, what Jesus did in laying down his life on our behalf, is a precious reality that impacts every element of our life. And that's why we must remember, we must be faithful to do this, to keep in front of us the significance of what Christ has done in the gospel. And as we do that this morning, I want you to consider with me Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Jesus describing what he is like, says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus here is describing what he is like and what it is like for those to come to him. He actually calls those who are weary and heavy laden to come to him and find rest that can only be found in him. This world is filled with many trials, many hardships that potentially bring turmoil to our souls. Yet nothing brings unrest to our souls to a greater degree than remaining under the just holy, righteous wrath of God in our sin. To be enslaved to our sin, to be separated from God, this brings the greatest unrest to the human soul. And for a soul wearied by the cruel master of sin, the lordship of Jesus is light and refreshing. It is restful. We need to remember the rest that comes from Jesus. We experience peace because he experienced turmoil. And we experience grace because he experienced wrath. We experience life because he experienced death. We experience hope of a resurrection because he was resurrected. And he says, take my yoke. A a yoke is a type of harness. It was placed over the neck of an ox to restrain and direct that ox. And Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. He is a gentle master and he is humble in heart so much so that he was willing to lay down his very own life for you. If you're a Christian. He is a gentle master. And if you... Will but, or if you have placed your faith in Jesus, there is rest found in him. And what we find, the, the reality is, is that a day experiencing the fiercest trials and the greatest hardships that this world can offer, yet under the grace of God, being reconciled to God through Jesus, is infinitely better than a lifetime of ease in this world, yet under the condemnation of your sin. How kind is our Savior? 
And how easy is it to be deceived? To think that the things of this world will bring peace that only Christ can bring. To think that the things of this world will satisfy in ways that only Christ can. He's accomplished it all. And he gives to us riches beyond measure in himself. Let us remember these precious truths. The men are going to come in just a moment. Let us remember Christ who laid down his life, who shed his blood, who brought about forgiveness of sins, who reconciled us to himself so that we might have rest in him. Let's remember our Savior. And Christian, where there is known sin that you have not repented of, this is, this is the time to begin the process of repentance, to take some personal inventory, to evaluate your own life and and where God has revealed things that are not right before him, turn from that. Where there is sin, repent of that sin. Begin that process now and take and remember this is what Christians do. And if you're not a believer in Jesus, if you haven't turned your life over to him in faith and in repentance, then We would ask that you let the bread and the cup pass by as this is a time for Christians to remember something very precious and very dear to us, and that is our Savior's crucifixion and resurrection. I would plead with you, if, if you would but repent today, that would be much better. This rest in Christ is offered to you this morning. And if you would repent, then we'd like to invite you to take the bread and the cup with us. Rejoice in Christ's work in the gospel. Men, please come serve us. When your heart is prepared, take the bread and the cup, and then we'll pray together in just a few moments.